All right, welcome Pink Power. We are here for Monday Night Team Call. I'm Jamie Haskin, Diamond Ambassador, and I am excited to talk to you guys tonight about a topic that is gonna include working through tough times and specifically about our vision through it, um, mostly how we can take action. And that's gonna include a lot of question asking. I'm gonna give a lot of examples. So if you have a pen and paper ready, if you have a way to kind of take some notes, um, I am gonna have a slideshow coming up here and that will help as well. But it's gonna be a lot of information at you and I think it will be helpful for yourself reflecting. Of course, always reflect on ourselves first, but also if you have people under you, how you can ask questions and dig deeper on a lot of these things. So I'm gonna start right away with screen, screen sharing here. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're talking about how to lead with vision and action when faced with resistance. This quote is important because we need to expect and anticipate that there are going to be problems. It is not like we are doing something new here and it's going to be perfect the whole way to the top, right? We know that we should expect and anticipate that there are going to be struggles along the way. Um, this is from Michael Hyatt in the book, The Vision Driven Leader. He says, when resistance rears its ugly head, it's not the facts of the situation that are the problem, but how we respond to them emotionally. While we need to stay emotionally connected to our why, we can't let negative emotions swamp us. We may experience fear, doubt, disappointment, but we don't have to let them dictate our actions. We can notice them for what they are, refuse to let them control us and keep moving forward. So a couple of things here. He mentions when, not if, resistance comes, right? Like I was just saying, when they come, we have to know to expect them, to anticipate them, and to use it to help us grow. So life is not perfect. We are not going to expect our businesses to be perfect. We are not going, and we're going to be ready when these moments come, right? Um, anticipate fears, anticipate the struggles, anticipate the failures, because failure is not an indication or a sign that you are not going to do this or be good at this or that you need to stop. That is not what that means, right? We are going to fail through things in anything in life that is worth working for. He also says, notice for what they are. So we're gonna have the fear, doubt, disappointment, not dictating our actions. We're gonna notice them for what they are refuse to let them control us and keep moving forward. So this does not mean that we're positive poly over here and blind to the fact that things are hard, right? We acknowledge that we have emotions, we have frustrations, we have fears, we have things we have to work through, but that is not what is controlling us. So acknowledge it, talk to someone you trust, right? But keep moving forward. It is a choice not to let them control our actions and to keep moving forward. So three traits that beat the resistance. We're going to talk about tenacity. If you give up when faced with what is inevitable, what might you lose? We just talked about fears and failures and struggles being inevitable, right? So when faced with what's inevitable and we know it's coming, what might you lose? If you give up, are you going to abandon, jump ship, or are you going to keep showing up and grow through that? Resistance to your visions and your goals and your dreams will happen. So when someone gives up, it can begin to um, happen long before sometimes that actual decision. Sometimes it starts with our thoughts and we have doubts and that leads, leads to our fears more and that influences our belief and that influences our actions. And sometimes that trickling starts to happen and we can pull back and we can start to go through the motions. So acknowledge that, catch that in ourselves first before it gets to the point of where you feel like you have to give up. And can you acknowledge that in other people that you are working with in your team and catch that right away? It's never too late to catch those things. 
Second thing, integrity. God sometimes gives us obstacles not to destroy us, but to develop us. So in those moments, not compromising our core truths, our integrity. Without personal integrity, we lose trust with people. And that means not stopping when things get rough, doing what we're going to say we're going to do, follow through, not getting caught up in drama, um, continuing to show up as the person that your people can trust. Third thing is courage. Courage gives life to the vision once the initial enthusiasm wears off. So it's no secret, we can't be 100% enthusiastic, excited all the time. Everything's perfect, right? If things can wear off a little bit. So courage can give life to that vision through all those times, through the resistance. Resistance can look like failed goals, like a blow to your confidence, doubt, fears, feeling like you're sp spinning your wheels. So when faced with this, do you dial back? Do you tweak your vision? Do you help your people be happy and content where they are? Or, you know, do you hold fast to that vision, the bigger picture and communicate that with your people when others might not see it and they might be tempted to think, oh, well, maybe this isn't for me or that person can do it. They can be a diamond, but maybe not for me. Most people will give in, give up and move on, especially if they feel the pressure of how over what. I'm going to say that again. Most people will give in, give up, and move on, especially if they feel the pressure of how over what. So if the how is overwhelming and there's so many things to do, but there's no sight of the what, the why, what's the purpose, what's the point, we, that's where the vision comes in, right? Everyone has plenty of things to do in a day. Actually, most people probably don't get everything they want done in a day. So why is this going to take priority? Why, is, why work through the hard, right? So it's your job as a vision-driven vision leader to advocate for that vision and to do that for your people. Remember when people are starting with you, you know a little bit more than them, right? You don't have to be a certain rank to be a leader or a certain have a certain amount of experience, right? When people start, if they started after you, you know a little bit more. You're on this call, you have a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more personal growth than the person that may have just started with you. So they might not see that vision as strong yet. They, you know, if they stop, they're not going to get there. So you cannot afford to remain silent with that. Have courage for yourself, have courage for them. All right, we're gonna move into the majority of our meet here on taking action. So taking action when faced with resistance isn't hey, I missed a goal last month or I had a struggle last month. So this month, just keep going, keep doing it, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get it eventually, you know? It's, it's more than that. It's going to take a heck of a lot longer if we're not learning through things and being intentional with trying to figure things out. And that comes with a lot of question, ask, question asking for yourself, but also to your people as you're helping them through things too. So first, we're going to revisit vision and revisit your why. I'm not going to go into those details as much right now, but we kind of talked about that a little bit. Revisit vision, revisit why, make sure that's solid. Number three, what is currently happening? Number four, set goals. Number five, set an action plan based on those goals. You have to have these conversations in order to get to the goals and activity. So you can't skip this part and just set a goal for the next month and keep doing the same thing over and over. So current status, that was number three. So assess where you're at. How do you feel like things are currently going? Did you ever, did you meet your goals last month? What are you doing well? What would you like to see improve? What do you see as an area that you need growth in? Again, this is self-reflecting first, but these are also questions that I'm going to, I'm going to mention this later. I won't bring this slide up again, but questions later that you're going to be looking at to ask your people as well. So depending what is said in these things and, and questions can lead to more questions, right? You have these conversations, depending what is said, you can further ask questions to get into the direction where you need to go. So let's move on to that. Here are some examples. So say, the answer to one of those questions is, yeah, last month I didn't reach my rank up goal and I, you know, I didn't get as many new joints as I wanted. 
here are some questions that I could ask you personally, or you can think of asking your people. So what do you feel like is missing or needs to improve? First and foremost, a lot of people can know that answer themselves. You can know that answer yourselves before you need to get advice or figure out something from someone else, right? So ask, how many new contacts are you doing each day? Now, never, ever, ever assume. You can't assume that just because someone had a big goal and they said they were gonna do this activity that they actually did it. You don't know unless you ask. And this changes all the time. It can change weekly, it can change monthly. So it's never too, you can never ask these questions enough when you're trying to figure out what's holding someone back, why they're in a current struggle, why they're not reaching a goal that they had. It's revisiting a lot of these same questions. How many new contacts? With that, how many follow-ups? How many new um, relationship building contacts? I like to separate those from new contacts. So if what I can figure out from that is sometimes maybe someone's stuck in relationship building mode. If they don't know the answer to these questions, then they maybe are doing less than they think and they need to start tracking it. So ask, I would then ask them to start tracking it every single day and then they can look back on a week and a month and see how much they were actually doing. How often are you posting? You can look at their social media. Does anything need to be improved there? Can, are they not posting enough? Are they posting too much? Are they sharing a bunch of random content? Are they engaging? Are they commenting back to people who comment on their posts? You can find out a lot by just looking at their social media and that's a tool, a skill set that they can learn and develop. You can, tons of things you can send them, right? How many days a week are they doing IPA? How much time are you working in a day? If you're working a ton, but not getting things done, maybe they need help to how to be more efficient. If they're not doing hardly anything, maybe they need help making things a priority and fitting that in. How many new friends are you adding a week? If they're not adding new friends, there's another bell that you might wanna address, right? Um, do you have any good conversations currently happening in your reach outs? What do those look like? If they're not having good ones, why not? Are people even responding to them in the first place? Are they getting stuck in a certain spot? Are they not closing the deal? Like, do they have struggle with that part? What skill set do they need help on? Ask for screenshots. Ask them because then you can see their language, what they're saying, how they're ending conversations. Maybe they're ending them and they're not keeping the conversation going or asking questions. You can easily help people tweak things in those, in those places. So you're looking for answers to questions where you can ask more questions and then you can figure out an activity, a tool, something you can do to help them further their skill set, or you uncover a big mindset block. Coming back to mindset, skill set, or both. Another example, someone's not developing enough silvers. Yeah, I didn't reach my goal. How, you know, are you developing silvers on your team? Well, not really. No, I, we're not developing any. Or no, I've never developed a silver myself. So I would ask, what are you asking or saying to help them go silver? What are, how, what kind of, what conversations are you having? What action steps are you doing or giving them to help them go silver? How do you sign someone up? Is that a messenger text on the phone? What do you say when you sign someone up? Walk me through that process. Walk me through, you know, before, during, after, what do you say? I want to hear what they say and how they do it. If you're, if you're not on the phone, that's one thing that we can shift and change. Can you start put, doing all your signups on the phone? When you're on the phone, do you mention anything about sharing with friends or the business opportunity? How do you mention it? What do you say? Do you quick say it and pass it by and don't ask the question and wait for a response? You know, you can figure some of these things out. You can give tools and examples of how they could maybe change this so that they can start to develop more silvers. You'll probably see things that aren't happening that maybe should be happening. What do you say when someone has a victory? Again, I'm asking you guys this as well as thinking about for your team. What do you say when someone loves their slim? They just got their package in the mail and they're excited. They have, a, they have energy throughout the day. What do you say? Do you, do you just say, yay, awesome, I'm excited for you? Or do you say, that is fantastic. What do you think about putting a post up? I bet you some of your friends would love to have more energy too, you know? Or if they don't want to, that's fine. But can I put a post up and talk about that? That's really exciting. Um, are you using three-way chats for all your conversations? 
So in these moments, your sponsor can validate what you, you say when in the three-way chat, they can see something that you could, they could tweak, you know, and, and help teach you through that and vice versa for your people down. But all your conversations should be there. Your relationship building ones, your, you know, if someone messages you out of it, bring it back to that three-way conversation. Um, what you're seeing and what you're looking for is this trickling of the business and of the opportunity and developing people through multiple areas and conversations. Um, let's see, how about we move on to if you don't have new workers. So how do you talk about the opportunity with new joins and potentials? Do you talk about it? You'll find out right there. You know, are they even, I have some typos in here. Um, do you, are they even talking about it? What are you saying? Um, has anyone, you know, do you reach out about the business? Do you bring it up in conversation in your, in your, with your potentials or with your new joins? Has anyone showed interest? If they say no, I've been reaching out with the business or I've been talking to new joins about the business for a while and no one shows interest. Okay, well, we need to maybe figure out what's being said, right? How, what, how can we maybe tweak things? Tell me what you say, walk me through it. If yes, they show interest, what are you doing next? How are you getting people plugged in? What are you having them do? Are you giving them action steps? Are you helping them move forward? Or are they kind of sitting there? Maybe are they given too much information or are they getting not enough information from you? It's a lot of questions, but just figuring out what is happening and helping people be more intentional in specific areas that are possibly lacking. Are you doing three-way calls with your new joins in your upline? Those can be really, really powerful. That's like a welcome call or a vision casting call. When someone first joins, you're just connecting them to your upline and then they're taking over. And you then can do that for, you learn from your upline with that. And then you can do that with your people as well. And that can turn into a silver or it can turn into an all-in worker or someone who maybe wants to share with a few people, but you get on a call with them and cast some vision, all of a sudden, yeah, they got big goals. They want to retire from their job and they want to go diamond and, and whatever have you. So you can find out a lot more from a call if you can get on these welcome calls, vision casting calls. How often do you reach out about the business? How often do you post about the business? That gives you indication right there too. Is that something that we can increase? If you want to develop new workers, do we need to do more of this? So just more questions again to look into um, those specific things. All right, next example. Have, you have workers, but you're not reaching goals. You feel, your workers feel stuck right? Your workers are not reaching their goals. So this is if you have a team and if you don't yet, that's okay. This is still applicable, right? You're still going to learn through this. So what you can ask your level ones, your people, what do they want out of this? What is their goal? Got to revisit that, right? It's like revisiting, you know, your why and your vision and your goals. What do you want out of this? Have you casted vision to them? How often do you talk about it? Have you kind of talked about it once? months ago or however long ago, and you're not really talking about it that much, are you excited for them? What is their why? Did they write it down? Do you know what their why is? If they didn't write it down, do you know if they write it down, wrote it down? Those are questions to get conversations going again. You have to determine if their why is, is superficial or if it's deep enough. You know, how, how does it make them feel if they accomplish this? Why? Um, what does it mean for them? How does their life look different if they reach their why tomorrow? What would look different for them? Figuring out what their pain points are with that. You know, what, how would it look differently if, or how would you feel if you didn't reach your why, right? Discovering those pain points. Do you, how, do you do coaching calls with your people? How often, how do they go? If leadership terms and coaching call terms scares you or intimidates you, just don't call them that, but get on the phone and ask these questions. This is, that's all you have to do is ask questions and help people set goals, make action plans, move forward. So do you do coaching calls with your people? How often? If you're not, and you're just doing calls where you're talking, how, I ask how they go, because if you're just talking and if they have questions, you just answer whatever questions they have, 
and just see what comes up. That's a little bit different than being intentional and figuring out what's happening in these kind of questions. Does that make sense? There's a little bit of a difference between being casual conversation and just hanging and, and talking versus these type of questions. What monthly and weekly goals are your people setting? Are they setting goals? I ask that because sometimes I find out, oh, well, they're not really setting goals. Okay, so what monthly, weekly goals are they setting? What is their current activity? Goes back to that other slide I told you about, remember? So IPA, new contacts, what is their current activity looking like? Going over those things. What are their personal affirmations? I ask that because sometimes, and, that, and I'll ask, are you saying them every day? Are they written down somewhere? Sometimes they are not. Oftentimes they did personal affirmations once a long time ago and they, they're not up to date. They're not in front of them. There's always, always usually some form of mindset issues that come up in all these kind of questions, right? Skill set and mindset. So personal affirmations is something that is important. You need to know if your people are doing them or not. What skills need to be developed or activity needs to be adjusted? You can ask them that, or these are the kind of, that's what you're going to discover as you're asking these questions, right? You're going to figure out, okay, there's a tool I can send them. There's um, something that they can work on, a video, a training video they can watch. They their activity is too low. That's why they didn't reach their goal. We got to increase their activity. We have to figure out, they have to develop their first silver. They've never developed a silver. So I got to figure out why and help them develop a silver. Okay. So you're going to figure out these things through questions like this. As you identify the areas to work on, I got way ahead. I'm looking at my notes, making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. I want to back up one thing here. So as you determine these type of things, I was just telling, talking about, figure out if, if they are being passive or direct. And this goes for yourself too, but you want to, I also look for, are people being passive or direct? And I mean, in terms of that, are you asking questions and being direct in your questions and waiting for answers? Or are you suggesting things? And are you just kind of beating around the bush a little bit, right? So being direct is not scary. It's not being like hammer down. It's not like you have to be mean. That's not what being direct is. It's just working through these things. It's helping people through these things, right? So being direct in how you speak, asking questions. Um, okay. Moving back on. So as you identify areas to work on, you're going to do these specific things. Identify an action step, make it measurable, create a timeline, ask for a commitment, and then have them follow up with you. So if you do these things intentionally moving forward, you're going to be able to make specific gains, right? We're not just going to continue to go through the same motions. Um, I specifically, it's important to make action steps, not just, okay, go watch that video or okay. Um, do more reach outs. We want specifically what they're going to be doing when they're going to be doing it, asking them for their own commitment. It's their goals, right? It's their, um, it's their action plan. So they have to be willing to commit to that. And if they have that commitment and then you, instead of chasing people down all the time, um, ask them to follow back up with you. Okay. After you get this done, can you pop back in our three-way chat and let me know? Okay. So I'm going to give some specific examples when it comes to that. Oh, wait, I didn't write them down. Let's go back. I'm just going to tell you specific examples. Okay. So example one, they say one of the issues was they want more business builders. Okay. So an action step could be many things. One of them could be post more about the business, right? So instead of just saying that, we're going to make it measurable. How often do you think you should be posting about the business? How many times a week? They say three. Okay, great. Um, do you think you can start this week? Yes. Okay. So you're going to post three times a week about the business starting this week. That sounds like something you commit to. Yep. Okay. Come back after a week or actually in our next coaching call, because that'll be a week. Um, we'll talk about this and follow up about that in terms of if you got that done, okay? So that's example one. Example two, someone is new to sharing and not sure how to start. 
one action step could be to write down names of people to reach out to. We want to make it measurable. So how many names? Well, that depends on their interest level. Are they all in? Are they wanting to just get three people to join? Where's that interest level? You're going to find that out on your initial three-way call, right? So if maybe it'll be writing down a list of 10 names. Maybe it'll be 10 about the business and 10 about the products. Maybe it'll be an all-in person who's going to use that 64 worksheet. I use that a lot. So make it measurable, whatever that is, and then create a timeline based on what's possible with the names and their interest level, right? So, okay, how about we make a list of 10 people who you think could use this, the products in this business. And once you got their names written down, take a picture of it and pop it in our three-way chat. Can you do that by tonight? Yes. Awesome. They do that. They send that. Okay, great. Do you think you can reach out to all those people by Friday? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So you have the commitment and you have the timeline and then they are following up with you. You can say, you know, send me a message when you've reached out to all of them. So they're coming back to you. Um, another one could be um, someone's frustrated and struggling about mindset issues. So action step could be start doing personal affirmations, right? So write down, you know, we, on, on all these conversations, we uncovered some personal affirmation stuff, some personal struggles and mindset issues. So write down five personal affirmations that are opposite of the, the current struggles that they're facing. You could give them some examples. They could probably come up with it themselves. Ask them, you know, can you write these down and take a picture of it and send it to me by tonight? It doesn't need to wait another day or two. It doesn't need to wait a week for your next coaching call. That can be done right away. Sense of urgency for some of these things are important, especially when it comes to reaching goals or, you know, your reach out numbers or contacting dream teamers or whatever it is. If they got big goals, set timelines right away that are doable, but you're not prolonging things for another week. Um, and then, you know, I, I would tell them to put it somewhere they can see it. Can you, could you say this out loud every day before you do your IPA? Say your personal affirmations out loud every day before you do your IPA. Could you IPA? Could you do that? Yes, I can do that. Awesome. Um, so you have measurable, you have timeline, you have them following up with you. Um, so basically, yeah, those are my examples. I want to see if there's anything I missed. Good, good. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So expectations for ownership and responsibility, and we are going to be wrapping this up. Um, oh, back on this one. Huh. Focus, Jamie. Okay. So basically you are playing ball with them. That's what I was going to say. If they're coming back to you, you're playing ball, right? You're trying to get them communicating back to you, following back up with you. If they do not follow back up with you, of course, you're the leader, go to them and ask them if they completed that work. That's your responsibility, right? So hold people accountable. If they, if you know their why and they, you help them identify goals, you have, um, you have, permission, that's what I'm looking for, permission and responsibility to follow up with them as a leader, right? As someone who's helping them, as someone who's linking arms with each other. And you yourself go to your sponsor and your leader as well when it comes to these kind of things. Um, so next one, expectations for ownership and responsibility. First of all, we'll run through this. I know we're getting low on time here or maybe our time is up. Okay, really quickly. Take responsibility. Stop blaming, waiting, or going through the motions. Take responsibility and own it. It's your goals, your actions, your responsibility, not your sponsors, not your team, not waiting for someone to start working underneath you like you think they should be so that you can get to your next goal. Not thinking your current team, who you have now, is going to be what's going to get you to your next rank. Okay. Finding new workers each month, developing new level one workers each month, taking responsibility, owning that, owning what you are doing in your activity, right? So it's first on us. Take, um, same for your people, help them by asking these questions, help them take responsibility, right? Assess if it's achievable, adjust the goal, take actions, move forward. Don't be afraid to help them see a bigger goal if they are giving small goals or if they are selling themselves short. You can have bigger belief and have um, some bigger goals that you can say, I believe in you. I think you can really do this. What do you think about that? Okay, so don't be afraid to do that for them as well. Second thing, have intentional action. 
this is helping us moving forward. It's not like rah, rah, yay, good job. Keep going, keep doing what you're doing. You're good, you're amazing. You're gonna get it. Next month, you'll get that rank. Yeah, that's that's not gonna cut it. We need to be intentional. We need to ask questions. We need to move forward. Um, that's again, difference between passive and direct, right? Be direct in these questions, not just suggesting or telling them to do something, break it down, ask the questions, help them move forward. Look at yourself first. What needs improvement? Develop a skill, set goals, make action steps. Look at yourself first with those things. Um, how are you working with your people? Are, what questions are you asking? How's your time spent? Are you being intentional using these kind of tools? And then finally, look for problems to solve. Don't look for problems to avoid. We're not in the business of avoiding problems, even though it's not fun to have problems, right? We want it all to go great. We want to stay in momentum. We want things to be perfect, but life is not perfect. So we're not looking for problems to avoid because if we look for problems to solve, you're going to be ahead of the game. You're going to see what's coming. You're going to anticipate that things are not going to be perfect. You're going to have some roadblocks. There are going to be some struggles. What can you see now? What can you anticipate? What can you look for so that you can work through them so that you can maybe head some off a little bit and that you can grow through them and become the leader that you need to be to bring up a team to Ruby, to Emerald, to Diamond, because we all have to grow through those things in order to get there. It's not a bad thing. It's not a scary thing. It's something that we can be excited about because we know it's going to help us improve ourselves, our leadership, all the things. So anticipate the resistance and grow through that. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I hope that was helpful. Took some screenshots, got some notes, and I will be posting this for later. So have a great night. Thanks for joining us.